everybody, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. The weather has cleared up, the roads have opened up. My buddy Adam is at this truck stop here as well. You've met him a couple of times. He's just a few doors down that way. Just had a chat with him this morning. It's always fun to run into friends on the road. Uh, he said the highway was actually closed to Regina last night. He came from that direction and once he got here, he looked at the, the app and it was closed. So it's a good thing we stayed here. Wouldn't have gotten very far and I would have been stuck on the road there somewhere or had to turn around. So I've been here for nine and a half hours right now and I'm trying to get confirmation from work that I'm bringing this load to our yard in Manitoba. Because if I'm staying in Canada and going home tonight, I can leave now. I only need to stop for eight hours. But if I'm going into the US with it, because it's going to Iowa, and if they want me to take it straight there or if they want me to deliver it there today yet, like cross the border today yet, I have to make sure that I'm stopped for 10 consecutive hours here first before going into the US, because the US hours of service and the laws there require that, 10 hours off before starting your day. So I gotta make sure I'm legal for that. I was waiting for confirmation on that. If we're staying in Canada, we're gonna get out of here right away. And if we're going to the US, and we just gotta sit around for about another 45 minutes. I already did my free trip and everything. I'm ready to go, but uh, e-logs, am I right? Keeping us all accountable to the law and stuff. Crazy. Making sure we obey. No cheating. Obey the law. <laughs> Honestly, for me, the e-log hasn't bugged me much. I've been on it for several years now already, and when I first started driving in 2006 and doing long haul in 2011, I was on paper logs for like seven, almost 10 years. No, 15. Over 10 years, I was on paper log. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit of an adjustment getting onto e-logs. And I'm not an advocate for e-logs, don't get me wrong. I am not pushing for more of this regulation. But uh, it hasn't honestly really bothered me that much. I mean, really all it does is it keeps the cowboy truckers accountable. The guys who like to drive, you know, pop pills and drive for three days straight. That's what I mean by, I should call a super cowboy trucker. Because cowboy truckers are pretty cool. I like them. The super cowboy truckers. You guys know the ones I'm talking about. They, you know, they pop pills and they drive across the continent without stopping. It's, that's what it's designed to stop, so that they're not running two or three logbooks at the same time. It hasn't really bothered me much, but I'm not pushing for it either. Paper was nice, but this is a lot easier. I mean, a lot less paperwork. We've gotten our answer. We're going home tonight. We're not entering the US, so we can get going right away. The highways are open. Let's get going. Let's see how bad they are. Off we go. Sun is already starting to come up, so it's gonna be a good day. There's Adam, truck with his lights on there. He's got a brand new, uh, brand new Peterbilt. What are those models called? It's like the condo sleeper. We'll go say hi to him. Nice truck! Say hi to everybody. <laughs> I almost got hit too. Really? Right here? Yeah. There's my horn. He it off. Yikes. Shoot. Oh, I'll be right behind you. I'm going the other way. Okay. We'll have a safe trip. You too. <laughs> Make sure I don't hit him now. Hey, yeah, that's the spot right there. When if you're on the corner, corner, corner spot, you got people coming around you all morning. He, some of these guys, you know, they, they're still asleep. get out there I mean, we'd already be out there <laughs> this, this guy's getting paid by the hour tell you what 
I want to get moving. I want to go home. So I called into the load gods to dispatch this morning. We've got a great team working there, and I've been uh, helping out van division, obviously, because I have a van trailer behind me. Uh, if you haven't watched my last couple of days of vlogs, I rescued a trailer here in Saskatoon, actually. A uh, truck had broke down. I bobtailed here, grabbed this trailer, delivered the load to Edmonton yesterday morning, and then was on my way back home with a load, uh, and uh, I got stuck here. Turn right on. Mark is driving then. Turn left into 160 meters. The roads got shut down, and the snowstorm was too bad, so I stayed here for the night. Now we're continuing back, and... Uh, before I got past Regina, I wanted to make sure I wasn't taking this load straight through to Iowa, because then I'd go straight south from Regina, right? Uh, I thought the plan was to go home, and I just wanted to confirm that yes, that was the plan. A new bridge or something here. This is Portage La Prairie. Look at all the smoke. What's going on? This is all smoke. Keep that air outside the best we can. What's going on? Is there a big fire here somewhere? This looks like fog, right? No, I think, I think that's smoke. Anyways, they're doing this construction here, and in the meantime, Manitoba has gone the route of insanity and installed a roundabout here. For whatever reason. 
they don't really need a reason they just uh figured they'd have some fun with it i guess wondering where all this smoke came from or is it fog like no that's smoke and that doesn't smell like wood burning either oh that smells kind of chemically okay i'm gonna leave the windows closed i'm gonna have to google what's burning in portage la prairie on november 8th definitely thickest over over on the west side of town by the looks of it it's sort of clearing up here but once I pull over if I remember at the end of my I'll probably forget by then what is burning in Portage La Prairie on November 8th 2022 Not much filming, I know, but I dropped the van trailer in the back, left the paperwork inside so that the next driver can take it, and I grabbed the new step deck. We're headed to Kenora tomorrow morning. I'll pick up another little lumber. Not too sure where it's going yet, but I know where it is. So, just rushing, rushing, rushing. I gotta be up early tomorrow. I've gotta leave home probably about 5.30 in the morning, six o'clock, somewhere in there. So I'll get the truck all ready to go. No time to wash it or anything today. I'm just going home just to sleep pretty much. Well, spend time with the family and sleep. Get home, shower, eat, watch a movie probably, and uh, go to bed. But it's something, it's something. I'm glad I get to go home at least for the night. Back at the shop, it kind of feels like we're parking old blue here for the weekend. Feels like that because we've already been driving for, what, four days? More than that? No, more than that. Because I drove all last week. No. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Oh boy, over five days. It's been like a really long week. That's why it feels like it's been so long since I've been home. Ah, uh, don't worry. I'll be back in the morning. Wait, what, what's tomorrow? Wednesday? I have three more days this week yet I gotta make use of. So we're going to Kenora tomorrow. I don't know where that load's going yet. I already told you that. Old Blue needs a bath, but she'll have to wait till the weekend. I have new decals coming now. I ordered new ones. I ordered them through a company here in town and they ghosted me. And I've been waiting over seven weeks. No calls. No, I went in there in person. They said they'd call me back. Never called me back. I've called them two or three times throughout the two months. Kept saying, oh yeah, we'll uh, check up on that and we'll call you right back. Every time, same thing, exact same thing. We'll check up on that for you, yeah, and we'll see where it's at, and we'll call you right back once we have an answer for you. It's been like over seven, almost eight weeks, two months. So I said, you lost my business. I wanted to support local, but you lost my business. I, I don't know what kept, kept happening. I don't know why I kept falling through the cracks. Maybe they just didn't want to work with me. I don't know what I ever did to them, but they're not getting my business now. So I ordered uh, new decals myself. And I'll put them on myself because this name is spelt wrong and it's driving me and all of you nuts. That is supposed to be I-L-E. The D is supposed to be lowercase and there's supposed to be like a little house like that over the E. And it's supposed to be a lot smaller. I ordered them uh, about an inch and a half to two inches. Two inches? I ordered them small enough that I can put them, uh, I don't know, this blanket in my hand here. Down at the bottom of the door here. Because I did check up on it. Uh, we do have to have the town name on the side of the truck. So. I'll order the rest. I'm going to see how these decals come. Or decals. How they come. How they stick. How they work. And if, I, if they're good, I'm going to go through that company from now on. Other than that, I'm going home now. This is my editing station. My little office here now. No time for editing tonight. It's already 8.30. I want to go home. Got my tarps inside on my catwalk there, warming up overnight. They got all wet. So hopefully they'll dry out a little bit in here. I mean, they're rolled up, so they're probably not going to, but at least they'll thaw out a little bit. And they'll probably freeze on the way to Kenora tomorrow anyways. I have to use them tomorrow. I have to tarp my load. And then, uh, eh. the tires are still doing pretty good. I'm hoping I can get another year out of them yet. 
I want to replace these drives next fall, just before winter. We'll see if they make it that far. They're doing pretty good so far. And then maybe this weekend or a weekend soon, I'm going to have to take this flag. These are my new ones, right? This is the original flag of Canada. That's, that's Canada's flag. If, if you didn't know that, history lesson, that's not really our flag. That's our current flag, yeah. Like, don't, that's not what I meant. That is the flag we have over our heads now, but uh, it was changed from that. That was our original flag. New Zealand and Australia. All these other flags, except for New Zealand, UK, and the old Dominion flag. Uh, I put through the dryer first to get rid of those little creases, right? Like, these other flags, they still got those squares on it. Driving me nuts. I thought that they would just fade out on their own if I just leave them and hang them up for a while. Yeah. They're still there, so I've got to uh, I've got to take them home and put them through the dryer so that they look more like that without all the creases. If you're new, uh, I like flags. Some people collect stamps, some people collect rocks, some people collect classic cars, and some people collect boats. I collect flags, sort of. I just I like the history. I like history. Anyways, that's enough. It's time to go home. She's struggling with the other boys in there. She'll open the door soon. Oh. Hello. Hi, Dizu. Dizu. Hi. Hi, my boy. Mom, I was in a snowstorm. Oh, Mom. oh my goodness. Almost died. Oh. Oh, I saved Dad. Oh my! Oh, I know. Dad. Look at him. Oh my goodness! Hi, Boomer. Watch the little guy. Wait, 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 wait. Chevy! <laughs> Look, I brought Diesel home. Oh, Diesel home. Yes. <laughs> Chevy. He smells like the truck, doesn't he? Hey, buddy. <laughs> Did you miss him? Did you miss him? He smells like snowstorms. What? <laughs> I'm showered. I'm fed. Look at that baby bump. There she is, OG. Nineteen and a half weeks. Almost halfway. We're getting there. I can feel it stretching out in there. Woo! You've been able to feel it kicking around too? Uh, yeah, a little bit. This afternoon when I laid down for a nap, felt a little bit of fluttering. And then yesterday in the bathtub, I felt a bit of fluttering. That must be such a cool feeling. It is, it'll be even cooler when I actually know it's actual kicks and it's not just gas. But <laughs> <laughs> It's kicks. Yeah. Baby. 